Hello, I'm Willie, and welcome to Horsepower. Today we've got a rather long video. I am rebuilding the gearbox on my Toyota Celica GT4 Rally car and upgrading it to an SQS gear set. If you watch a lot of TikTok, uh, this video will likely bore you. If you find technical stuff interesting, please watch on. So strap yourself in. Today is a very exciting day. Along with upgrading the engine, uh, I'm going to upgrade the gearbox. This is something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Uh, what I've got here, it's just arrived from the, the Czech Republic. Got here pretty quick. What I initially wanted to do was a, a full proper sequential gearbox. After looking into it and pricing it up, it, it was really quite unwise. And therefore I fell back on this. Um, apparently a very good product. Uh, so let's um, dig into it and see what's, see what's arrived. As I said, this came from the Czech Republic, a company called SQS Racer. They're very well known for doing Celica GT4 uh, parts, along with many other makes and models. Now this is the part I'm most interested to get my hands on, mostly because I don't know how it works. This is a sequential shifter, so it converts your H pattern uh, standard gearbox into a sequential. Pretty cool piece of kit. How it works, I'm still going to figure out. Still yet to figure out. And a gear display. I may not use this, I may just uh, hook up a, a program in the PowerTune dash to um, for that to display the gears instead, but it's good to have it anyway, it came with the kit. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Right, now it's time to get to the real meat of, uh, of the product. Yeah, that's the output shaft dog kit. Straight cut gears. It's a proper racing transmission. Little aluminium shift forks. This here looks like the oil pump drive gear. Uh, which is driven off the crown wheel uh, so it needs to be straight cut as well and another shift that one's slightly small That one must be for fifth gear. And 
is the input shaft. Just needs a bearing that goes there. Fifth gear, fourth gear, third, second, first, and reverse. Very nicely machined, very nicely finished. Very impressed. And finally, the, the crown wheel, which is driven off the output shaft. So yeah, there we go, in all its glory, the SQS Racing dog kit and sequential shifter. I can't wait to install it. Yeah. The next job to do on the Celica GT4 rally car is to install the, the new gear set into our gearbox. Uh, before we do that, I've got to pull it apart. I've got a brand new uh, casing ready to go. So this one will be surplus to requirements. But what I do need to do is pull it apart and fish out the plated front LSD inside. Here's a sped up version of me taking this gearbox apart. There's no real rocket science here. It mostly comes apart with basic hand tools and the trusty ugga dugger. First I'll remove the end casing. Spill oil everywhere. Get the standard practice. I've got a special tool here I made a few years ago which winds onto the drive gear for fifth gear. I also remove the selector shafts, which means we can stick a screwdriver and lock the gears in place, uh, which means we can easily wind onto the fifth gear and well I should say it goes onto the, the dog ring, which is supplied to the shaft, so that comes off, and then once that is off, the fifth gear simply pulls straight off which is what spins on the shaft and then we move over to the driven gear and there's a, a wee shoulder with some uh, custom custom parts I made which go into the puller and then we just pull the gear off important to stay hydrated when doing these big jobs we then remove the circlips on the selector shafts Once the gear is removed, we can take off the bearing retainer plate. We can take off the bearing retainer plate. This is held on by uh, seven or so cap screws. We are now ready to split the casing. Also important to remove the detent balls in the casing which lock the selector shafts in place. We then carefully pry the casings apart, trying not to damage anything. And off it comes. Here are the innards of the Celica GT4 transmission. This is a ST205 gearbox, so the gearbox code for that is an E154. Uh, the earlier ST185s had an E150. Uh, they're essentially the same inside, uh, the only difference really being the ratios and the synchro arrangement, um, but the general architecture 
and um, all the main bits and pieces are all the same. Uh, also along the lines of the MR2 turbo gearbox, the E153. Um, again, same architecture and same gear set as the E150. Um, the main different and the same casings as well. Uh, the only difference, or well, the main difference between that and the GT4 gearbox is the differential arrangement. Uh, there are two diffs in here, a front and a centre. And in the MR2, there's just a, a rear diff, just one diff. So this gearbox looks in excellent condition, to be honest. I don't see anything untoward. We can see the magnet here, which has you can you can see a lot of um, build up of general wear and tear, which is fairly normal, especially for a, a race gearbox, which gets a hard time as this one has. Um, but nothing nothing is particularly untoward that I see there. I'll pull it apart further and do some more investigation. Uh, this gearbox will probably just become a spare for me. Um, and this diff here is the Dodson's LSD, uh, manufactured here in New Zealand by Dodson's and sold by Agile Performance. This is a proper uh, ramp plated front LSD. You can see some of the Agile Performance videos if anyone is interested in purchasing, purchasing one of those. Uh, they're a very good unit for competition. I wouldn't recommend one for street use. Uh, but you could do it if you were keen. So yeah, the next goal is to pull all of this apart, uh, have a general look over, make sure she's all good, um, pull the diff out, pull the crown wheel off, and I'll pull apart the LSD, uh, make sure it's all happy. And what I intend to do is to not use any bits out of this gearbox for the new one. So I've got some new casings, uh, for the new gearbox, obviously a new gear set, new bearings, um, and new selectors. Uh, there will be a lot of other miscellaneous bits and pieces that we need, um, such as shafts, detents, and I've hopefully got enough. I've got several spare gearboxes that I should have enough spare bits to make one good bit, one good box out of all my spares. Crown wheel is now off. I've loosely put all these gears and bits and pieces back into the gearbox. Uh, just makes it easy to store and everything's in one place. I've already got millions of boxes worth of bits and pieces kicking around so I'll try not to add to that confusion. There's a small chance I'll need to come back in here later on to fetch some bits. Now it'll go into storage like this. Now I continue to pull the gearbox apart and take out the detents or the remaining detents from the casing and slide out the selector shafts. So remove the reverse gear componentry and then the gear sets are ready to just pull out along with the front and centre diff. Here we have the front LSD apart. Uh, there's nothing broken or particularly worn out, which is good. Um, I'm just going to give it a good clean up and re-lubricate it and put it back together. I really enjoyed the setup of this diff. It seemed to work really well, particularly on gravel. Um, so I'm going to leave the settings as it is. Interestingly, there's all this sort of congealed oil slash worn out friction plates which sort of block everything up I presume that's reasonably normal to be honest I don't really pull apart many of these things anyway we'll give it a clean
make sure to give the casings a very nice clean. We've just got back from the vapor blasters and we want to make sure we remove all media out of it. We are now ready to put the new final drive gear onto the front onto the front diff. There's a lot of bolts holding this gear onto the diff. And we obviously don't want these diffs falling out, so they get torqued to some quite high number that I forget now. But it's important to do these all up very tight. In fact, it's a very hard thing to hold, so I find the easiest way is to put it in the lathe and using the brake, we can spin it around, lock it in place, and torque it to spec. Here we have a rebuild kit from Toyota, a bunch of handy seals and bits and pieces. Um, and both left and right axle seals. Uh, what I'm going to do next is put this gearbox input shaft seal in here. So I've just got to find a punch, the same outer diameter as that, and use that to punch it in, off in a socket or something like that will do the job nicely. There we have a 32mm socket, which is the perfect size. Many of the miscellaneous components in the gearbox, such as the oil pump um, and all sorts of other reverse gears and bits and pieces, are all second hand. They're all in good condition, but we want to make sure they're all nice and clean before they get installed. I stripped the oil pump down to give it a service. It all looks in great condition, so it's cleaned and put back together. The oil pump is installed along with the oil feed lines. SQS sent us this manual. Uh, which just gives a wee guide to modifying a few parts that you need to do to make this gear set work inside the gearbox. Uh, one of them is the modification of the reverse gear idler. Uh, so they just give us some measurements to uh, just take a little bit of uh, material off it uh, just so it clears first gear I believe. So we'll just follow these instructions, put it in the lathe and Hopefully it works out. Um, another thing they mention is there are apparently two different um, sizes of a reverse gear idler. Or what I should say really is there are two different gear profiles. One has 26 teeth and one has 23 teeth. And so we need to ensure that we have the right one. Uh, fortunately this one I had lying around is the correct 23 teeth. So we are all good to use that. Right, well that was not a fun job. Um, as you can imagine, steel gears are quite hard. Uh, I think these are also case hardened, so they're hardened on the gears and towards the outside. And towards the middle it wasn't too bad, but um, as the, the teeth were going past the, the cutting piece it was just smashing it to bits. So I went through two or three uh, parting tips, not parting tips, sorry. Um, facing tips in order to get that down but it's done now so that's good I just need to clean up all of these little burrs uh, with a file and then it should be good to go next little job is to press off this oil pump gear 
Uh, obviously the one with the dog kit is a straight cut gear uh, so that's not going to mesh too well so this gear just presses off uh, this shaft so we just we keep the original shaft oopsie daisy so we'll put this in the press and while it might be tempting just to press on that that's not very big and that's probably going to warp so what I found this little socket here nicely fits over and we'll press on that Here we have the output gear shaft as it arrived. So this is fifth gear, so the bearing needs to go in here and that'll be sandwiched in the casing. So we'll simply take off that nut. Take off that fifth gear. And then bought new bearings from Toyota. Seems silly. To spend a lot of money on a gearbox and not put new bearings in it. I've never actually had a set fail in all my gearboxes that I've had over the years, but I figure might as well. Um, so we've just got to press that onto there. So we'll need to go over the press and set that up. That all worked out really nicely. It's time to put the bearings on the input shaft. So this is the inner race here, which will go just here. And it just so happens that a piece of roll cage tube perfectly slides down on there. And then this bearing will go just here.
Let's now install the shim and let's see how much drag there is to spin the bearing around. So now I've tested the inflow with no shim at all and we have or well, very little inflow about 0.02 millimeters If this was reusing if we were just going to reuse the bearings I'd be probably happy enough just to use it as it is uh, They're brand new bearings uh, so we want to preload them a little bit and that gives them a bit of um, bit of room to, for them to wear in. Now Toyota uh, suggests in the manual uh, to put a torque wrench on on this and then turn it and that torque measures the drag on the bearing which is a good way of doing it unfortunately uh, the torque value is about 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 newton meters which is a very small very accurate uh, measurement and I don't have uh, a torque wrench that will do that. Uh, so what I did instead is did some research on similar bearings, similar gearbox setups, and I found that the clearance for an Evo was with brand new bearings about 0 0.013, oh, sorry, 0.13 to 0.18 millimeter millimeters of preload on the taper bearings. So I'm going to aim for that, and that should work out pretty well. Pretty much the same as uh, the Toyota manual. Uh, so as soon as we have 0.2 mil inflow, uh, what we need is a 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.02 millimeter inflow. So now we'll, what we want is 0 0.18 preload. So that's a difference of 0 0.2 millimeters. So I need to get a shim of 0 0.2 millimeters. I could probably order one from somewhere. I'm going to give making one a go on my lathe here. So I've got this piece of... I've got this piece of round plate. I think it's 16mm round plate that's been laser cut at some point. Uh, I just had it cooking around. So what I've done is I've welded it to this 40mm uh, shaft and that's just going to make it easier to hold. I could have put it in these jaws here but it was a little awkward, so this was an easier way. There we go. Shim complete. It's not 100% perfect, it's 0 0.01 out, but it shouldn't be a problem. Now it's time to assemble the gearbox for good. Assembling this gearbox is really no different than if it was a factory gearbox. Obviously we make sure everything's nice and clean and lubricated before it all goes together. I'm also careful to check for clearance for the reverse gear. Make sure it clears all the gears. I'll take our time putting this all together, make sure everything fits nicely. It seems the SQS have done a very nice job in terms of designing this kit. So fitting together absolutely perfectly. So 
well as looking, making sure everything looks right. We want to make sure everything feels nice. So everything slides as it should. There's no binding up. That's all the internals installed. Everything went together very nicely. Everything spins beautifully. Everything seems in order. Now it's time to seal up this surface with genuine Toyota gasket sealant. Um, double check that the other housing over there has got all its bits in it. Uh, give that a final blow down and clean and then it can go on. Now that the second half of the main casing's on, we can install a bearing retainer plate. We've already done this a couple of times when test fitting it. And we simply put some Loctite on all of these cap screws and they are done up tight. Both gears for fifth gear goes on, along with the dog sliders and a bit of lubrication and some locking nuts. Now that we've got the gearbox all together, uh, it makes sense to have a look at the transfer case. Um, as far as I know, it's all good. Uh, I just wanna strip it apart, give it a good clean inspection, and then reassemble it with some new seals. Now that we've got our transfer case apart, we can closely inspect it. From, from a distance it looks perfectly good. However, if we go up closely, we can see there's quite a nasty burr, which indicates wear, and that's on all the teeth. Um, another bad sign is that there was all this um, quite dark metallic oil at the bottom of the transfer case with uh, a lot of sparkles which indicates that the oil's 
full of metal so yeah that's not really ideal and then I put the um, put the unit back into the transfer case and measured the backlash and we've got about 0.5 a mil of backlash which is way too much um, you might be able to put this back in there and maybe get a few miles out of it maybe a lot of miles I don't really know but it's not really worth putting it back in um, what seemed to have happened is that the um, the outer hardness is worn off so gears are typically case hardened which means the insides soft and the outside is quite hard to reduce the wear and once you wear away that hard outer casing um, they are not long of this world and um, these aren't particularly fun to change out later on and um, it could cost you an event so I think I'm just gonna have to throw this in the bin uh, fortunately you can buy these um, ring gear and pinions brand new from Toyota so I may rebuild this unit later on with a brand new brand new gear um, but what I've done is gone out to the hoard and found another one so we'll pull that one apart and hopefully that one's okay Now we've pulled this out and we can see here that this is a much healthier looking crown wheel. No burrs, only the normal wear and tear as you'd expect. That looks pretty good too, no metal shavings. Let's clean this up, put it back in. Right, what I'll do first. We've got the viscous coupler in there, which is pretty good for a standard machine. Um, I'm running the Dodson's front LSD, which effectively deletes the center diff, so it's just a, um, a solid drive, it renders the viscous unit obsolete, so it's just there kicking around for the ride. It weighs, I don't know, five kilos or something, so we'll whip that out before we put it back together. So this is the viscous coupler here, so it's got an input and an output and they go to the center diff in the factory gearbox. I'm not running that. So this can be deleted and also this shaft can be deleted too. Now we've got all these cleaned up, uh, we can put some gasket sealant on the surface and put it all back together. Now there's a few uh, reasons why that last one failed and that's definitely not the first one, that's the third one that I've done and that one that I've just inspected only did two events before I pulled it out and I kind of thought it would be good. Unfortunately it wasn't. So. There seems to be something going on, something going on here, something not quite right as to why these transfers are failing so early. One might say it's a lock center diff, which means any speed difference between the front and the rear will cause excess loading in the center transfer, which is true. However, the exact same loading is on the rear diff, just the, the opposite. 
and I haven't had any trouble with rare diffs. Um, so one might say, and this is my theory, is that the oil is getting too hot in the gearbox. And the last few years I haven't been running a gearbox cooler. Perhaps I should have been. And so when you put oil into a gearbox with a transfer, you need to do two main jobs. One, protect all the gears, and two, work nicely with your synchro so they engage properly. And you've got two opposing kind of ideals there. You've got wanting to look after your your synchros, which means you need a reasonably high friction in order for the um, the synchros to have friction and do their job. And then when you want oil for your gear, you want really slippery, really thick, just maximum pr protection. And so with a synchro box, that's a, a compromise you need to make. Uh, now that we no longer have synchros, we can put in some real thick, heavy, slippery shit, which should protect it. But what I think was causing it was excess heat. So um, hopefully that the combination of uh, a gearbox oil cooler and a heavier grade oil will hopefully protect these um, transfer gears from failing in the future. That concludes today's video. Congratulations on making it this far. Stay tuned for the next episode where I start putting it all together.